Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the ECM Dev Fed study model for today's second video. We're doing the European Outlook for the next 30 days slash uh, 42 days or 6 weeks. So this is the first day to look at. Uh, but we also extend out to uh, weeks 5 and 6 uh, as well. Because why not? The charts are there, so we might as well look at them, might we? So I'll get on that for you in a moment. Just say that first video this week was our uh, 6 m upload. We've got a 10 to 14 day coming up for you later on this afternoon as well. That includes all our break features. So please like, share, subscribe, and thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. Thank you so much to ECMWF.INT for supplying us uh, with the charts. Thank you so much. Uh, to them. Right, shall we get on with it then? So, let's start off with the week one uh, mean sale of pressure anomaly, taking us from the 16th through the 23rd of May. So, the coming week will be dominated by high pressure across many central parts of Europe. A big ridge of high pressure building up from the south uh, going northwards. There's a trough of low pressure in the Atlantic Ocean. And so, between the high pressure and low pressure, going to draw up a, a, a warm, maybe quite a hot sort of southerly wind at the western side of Europe. At the same time, there is a trough of low pressure into northwest of Russia. That might bring some cooler air down the far eastern side of Europe. But most parts of Europe actually look under the high pressure and to the west of the high pressure, looking uh, mainly dry and warm, you would have thought. The 500 millibar height is only from the Arctic and North Pole view down. Looks like that. So again, see the above average height to high pressure extending up from southern Europe into the northwest of Europe. There's a trough of road pressure in the far east and northeast of Europe. It's been cooler uh, there. And of course, we've got the trough of low in the Atlantic, and that brings up this warm southerly up the western side of Europe. But again, that low pressure could provide energy for heavy rain and maybe even thunder. Right, so here's week one, me, uh, here's week one uh, temperature anomaly, and uh, it looks pretty warm to your heart across uh, western parts of uh, Europe. So we're in the deep red colours, which is uh, anomaly is going to around 6 to 10 degrees above average. Wow, wow, wow. From France through to the low countries into Germany, also down to Spain and Portugal in most deep and vibrant uh, race through there. Elsewhere, more widely, we're going to be seeing temperatures um, uh, at least like three degrees above average really across most parts of uh, northern, western, and even some central parts of Europe. This warmth extends all the way into Poland. Now, the far north, northeast Europe is a lot cooler, so northern Scandinavia down the Baltic Sea uh, areas and into the far east of uh, Europe, down into Black Sea, and just into the far eastern part of the Med, Greece, Cyprus, into Turkey. Uh, there we do see that um, temperature anomalies are below average, so the cooler temperature anomalies are uh, there and, and sort of centered into the western part of Russia, where uh, there we're like uh, 6 to 10 degrees below average. And the precipitation anomaly looks like that for week one. So Scandinavia largely drier than average, as is many parts of uh, Europe, uh, particularly the Mediterranean, looking pretty dry there through Med, extending into France, into southern Germany, around the Asia, into the Balkans as well, looking uh, dry for there. Black Sea looks wetter. And a little bit wetter, perhaps down into towards some of the Greek islands. There might be some thunderstorms there. And then uh, in the northwest of Europe, we've got Ireland looking uh, really quite wet in the week. Have heavy rain coming in off the Atlantic there, of course. And so this wet weather does extend through the UK into Germany, below countries, maybe Denmark uh, as well. That said, those are the exceptions to the rule. Many areas are drier than normal in the week ahead. Right, week two will take us from the 23rd uh, to the 30th of May. Uh, so, big changes actually this week. We send the high pressure out to the west into the Atlantic. Got this top of low pressure centered across northern parts of Europe. Also, lower pressure through the uh, Mediterranean as well. Looks like it's unsettled and probably cooler through this week across uh, many parts of Europe. The 500 millibar height anomaly looks like that again. Pulling me above average heights, high pressure out into the Atlantic. We're also extending it down into all Spain, Portugal and some southern parts of France. Deep trough of low pressure across northern Europe as well. Uh, and uh, that's backing into some western parts of Europe too. So it certainly looks like it's a cooler and more unsettled week here, particularly for more northern areas in uh, Europe. Let's have a look at the temperature anomaly. Uh, there we go. So we see it's going below average through most parts of uh, northern Europe. So Scandinavia is below average. Again, around those Baltic Sea uh, countries, Latvia, Estonia, Lithuania, 
below average through there. Uh, but the cooler conditions extending back in towards the western parts of Europe now, actually. So we've got Poland, you know, b a below average. Uh, Germany, Denmark going uh, below average. Even in some parts of the low country, it's a little bit cool. And even into the UK and Ireland, there's a definite cool down that's going on there compared to week one. Nowhere near as warm as it is in, in, in uh, week one. Conversely, though, it's still pretty hot across southern parts of Europe, so most parts of the Med are looking hot, particularly Spain, Portugal, southern parts of France, around the Côte d'Azur, uh, into the central bowl of the Med, um, the Balearic Islands, Corsica, Sardinia, Italy, all looking uh, hotter than average street this week. And these warm conditions extending through the Asiatic into the Balkans and then down into the southeast Europe, Romania, uh, and down towards Greece, maybe also Turkey, looking warmer than average for week two. And then we've got the precipitation only for week two, and it looks like that. So uh, it's wetter than average again across this northern part of Europe, above average rainfall in parts of uh, southern Scandinavia, in particular southern Sweden and uh, Norway, uh, maybe extend down into Denmark, and then uh, around the Baltic Sea areas and into the west of Russia once more, looking uh, wetter than average through there. Western parts of Europe are drier than normal, and most parts of southern Europe also coming out dry of an average most of the men looking dry so so it's a good week for holiday uh this week if you're going down to the men uh last week of may dry hot sunny conditions throughout most of the men um during the final week of may week three will be the 30th of may to the 6th of june high pressure men which is back into the west of york still some sort of trough left over across the northern parts of Europe, although it is weakening and this ridge sort of extending in towards the more eastern areas uh, as well. It's a weakening signal, as you often get uh, the further out you go, of course. 500 millibar height and only shows that the trough is still there, actually, across northern parts of Europe, albeit it is weaker. High pressure above average height across western and also southern parts of Europe, and extending into the southeast of Europe as well. Temperature anomaly is a week free, going into the beginning of June, look like that. So, again, it's quite cool, actually, across much of northern and uh, northeastern Europe. So, again, we see below average temperatures from Scandinavia to west of Russia, and then southwards into parts of uh, eastern Germany and Poland, uh, below average temperatures through there. Elsewhere across northern Europe, we're around average with the temperature anomaly. So, again, the UK, much of the low countries, which is northern France, Germany. Um, even down into uh, like Austria, Hungary, uh, just average uh, temperature anomalies there. Have to go further south and southwest to find the hotter air. So it's southern France, uh, again from Spain, Portugal, through the central western part of Mediterranean towards Italy, and then uh, once more going into the southeastern uh, part of the Mediterranean, but we look largely hotter than normal. And the uh, week three precipitation anomaly shows that much of southern Europe is drier than average, very, very dry conditions again through the Mediterranean, while further northwards it does look a little bit more unsettled, albeit it's a weakening signal uh, due to the fact that we're going further and further out. Week four will be the 6th to the 13th of June, and we look like that. Um, so again, you know, largely higher pressure really across many parts of Europe. We've got these pink colours. Uh, continuing, so if anything, most parts of Europe dominated by uh, ridges of high pressure, by the looking at the low pressure, again, up in the far north and northeast of Europe, uh, up here, really. The 500 millibar height anomaly, again, showing that we've got the below average heights, the trough of low pressure, still there across much of northern and northeast Europe, uh, ridge through the Atlantic, again, extending into many of the southern parts of Europe and through uh, the Mediterranean. Touch of normal, it's a week four, look like that. Not much change, really. Southern Europe getting the hottest weather, again, through the Mediterranean and up into France, looking pretty hot through there. Perhaps something a little bit warm, warmer beginning to come back towards the UK and Ireland. Uh, and then northern, northeastern parts of Europe are looking cooler than average again through Scandinavia, uh, around the Baltic Sea into west of Russia, uh, maybe going a little bit further south, was also starting to look a little bit cooler than normal. The eastern part of the map looks hotter than average. Uh, and then we've got the precipitation on, of course, for week four. And once more, many parts of Europe are looking quite dry, especially the southern parts of Europe. They've got all of that air, all of those areas of high pressure pushing through. Um, largely dry than average air. Wettest weather, most unsettled weather looks like it's in the very, very far north of Europe.
Right, so that's the 30 day uh, month hands uh, rock head done with the ECM XO. Let's just have a look at which survives it data before we go. So, uh, week five mean cell pressure anomaly will take us from the 13th to the 20th of June. It looks like that. Uh, high pressure then dominating again across much of uh, Europe, especially in central and southern parts of Europe. Lower pressure again is up here. The 500 millibar height only for week five looks like that. So, a ridge in the west and the southwest of Europe, top of low pressure across the far northern part of Europe. The week five temperature anomaly begins to get a little bit hotter across this western side of Europe. Coolest weather again is up in the far north, east, and northeast of Europe. And the uh, precipitation on week five looks like that. Most areas coming out driving average, though the extreme north of Europe does look a little bit wetter, but most areas are drier than normal. And then week six will take us from the 20th, of June, uh, 20, 20th 27th of uh, June. And it looks like that, a weakening signal. So the high pressure pulling out into the Atlantic, some ridging over on the eastern side of Europe, low pressure in the far north, and perhaps down towards Spain and Portugal. That's probably just a heat low, though. Uh, the 500 mm height anomaly uh, looks like that, week six. So low pressure is to the north of Scotland, then. High pressure going south and southwest, pulling away from the west of Europe, really. Uh, Jackson probably coming south was bringing more unsettled weather into northern and western parts of Europe. The uh, temperature normally uh, looks like this. So, most parts of Europe try a, a warmer than average, but our temperatures uh, a little bit cooler, though, in the far north. Otherwise, it's a pretty uh, warm scene across many parts of Europe for, for that particular week as well, uh, last full week of June. And finally, week six, uh, precipitation, not only from the 20th, 27th of June, looks like that. So most areas are, again, drier than uh, average, quite dry conditions through many parts of Europe, especially the further south, southwest you go. does look a little bit more unsettled, though, in the far north and northwest. Right then, so we're done uh, with this uh, week's ET extended for, uh, for the UK and for the rest of Europe as well. We'll do it all over again on Friday or Saturday. That'll be a fo be focusing on the UK and Ireland. Uh, the regular European outlook extended is always on a Tuesday. So uh, that's it for this week. We'll do, do it all over again uh, next week. We'll be back later on, which is 8 to 14 to have. That's going to include all our regular features. So come back for that then. Uh, but for this week's EC Extended uh, for, for UK and for Europe as well. Uh, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.